Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Social Business Day 2021. What a great day three did we have. It started off with what will perhaps be one of the highlights of this conference, which was COVID-19 vaccines as a global common good. Organized by the UNIS Center, this special session had an inspiring lineup of speakers, including Professor Mohamed Yunus, Executive Director of UNIS Center, Ms. Lamia Morshed, Jose Ramos Horta, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Enzo Curcio, journalist, Marina Mati, writer and human, human rights activist, Nabil Ahmed, who was from Oxfam International. And of course, we had a special address from uh, actress and performer, Sharon Stone, and we had Professor Cam Donaldson join in as well to provide his comments. What went through as in great unison is the step change and the step forward we have to go through in order to make sure that the objectives of the Alliance and the movement and the petition goes through. This was of course, followed by a very exciting lineup of uh, addresses being made from the executive director of the Impact Hub Network, moving on to the sessions which included the Environment Hub, the Circular Economy, and absolutely a brilliant session across the board. We of course then moved on to the Social Business Academia Forum, which is continuing as we have spoken through. And of course, a great day for us coming up where we've got the likes of three to four plenary sessions focused and I'll have my MC, co-MC Zinat Islam speak more about it. Uh, just again, a quick round of uh, acknowledgement of the participants who are there physically at the moment at the Kampala International University at Uganda and of course the Catholic University uh, as well of, Zimba of Zimbabwe at Harare. And we deeply appreciate their presence and their commitment to make sure even in these pressing circumstances they're pushing through their events. So you, they have our utmost gratitude as well. Now, again, a quick reminder about the housekeeping. Uh, please make sure that you have your uh, microphones on mute if you're not addressing the audience. Uh, you will be directed by the tech team about the uh, start and end times. And of course, the uh, master of ceremonies will be directing you. Please continue to network on the event tech platform. And of course, be aware of our dear friend Bill as you enter the plenary sessions. We've got a jam packed but very exciting uh, couple of plenaries coming up. But please be mindful of the times that you've been allocated to speak. Now, with that in mind, before we get into the concentrations of today, I'd like to quickly introduce a special message, a special message which has come all the way from Amazonia. Now, the significance of this remains the spread of social business across the globe. Here we've got an indigenous leader, Josie Tikuna, who has been promoting social business and undertaking it to solve her own problems in her community. Of course, she's sent this message on the eve of Professor Yunus's birthday. It comes with greetings, but she also talks about how her initiatives are changing lives on the ground. If I could please request the tech team to play the video. Thank you. pessoas com ações que fazem a diferença, né? também buscando é, salvar o planeta, né? o mundo que vivemos hoje, o planeta que vivemos hoje, ele pede por socorro, né? Pela, é, pelo fato do, do, do próprio ser humano é, poluir o meio ambiente que vivemos. Então, assim, dizer que parabéns aí, Unos, pelo combate à pobreza, e esse é o caminho, estamos juntos nessa batalha. É, eu sou Josiane, da Etinha Ticuna, coordenadora do projeto Agrovida aqui na região do Alto de Mães. É, 
O nosso projeto também ele se volta por essa questão do combate à pobreza, né? é, fortalecendo as mulheres daqui da região, da região do Alto Solimões, é, onde as mulheres estão praticando a, a agroecologia, fazendo os trabalhos de forma sustentável, né? é, gerando renda para as famílias, é uma forma de, de também trabalhar o meio ambiente de forma sustentável, onde é, suscitamos a importância da valorização do território onde vive, né? evitando que o rio, os igarapé, os lagos sejam poluídos. Né? É, o projeto Agrovida trabalha a questão da, da horta coletiva, trabalha a questão do saneamento básico, trabalha a questão da, do resgate da culinária nativa de forma é, orgânico. Né? Não há necessidade de que as mulheres e os indígenas, de modo geral, é, é, consumam a, o, o alimento industrializado porque futuramente causa, traz vários tipos de doença para os povos indígenas. Então, o nosso, o nosso trabalho aqui no projeto do Vida é combate a essa questão de erradicar o grande consumo né, é, de, de, de alimento industrializado, que também, de uma certa forma, polui o meio ambiente, polui a floresta, né? E nós trabalhamos em cima disso, com combate à pobreza, é, é, incentivo as mulheres a cuidar do seu território e dizer que nós estamos juntos, né? E o planeta pede socorro e nós estamos aqui nos unindo justamente para salvar o nosso planeta. Porque o plane... nós precisamos do planeta o planeta precisa do nosso apoio. Então, parabéns aí, Uno, mais uma vez, por desenvolver um lindo trabalho, né? E eu tenho passado alguns filmes, alguns documentários é, da IUNUS, e esse documentário ajudou muitas organizações a se organizarem, né? Então, é, meu, eu finalizo aqui dizendo meus parabéns, né? Mais é, um ano de primavera, né? mais um dia de trabalho, é isso mesmo, nós estamos aqui para somar. Parabéns mais uma vez. We again pass on our utmost gratitude to uh, all the Tikuno people, wish them the very best. And again, we, again, the deep trust in the model that they have and the theory of change that we are trying to implement here, uh, the words that she's, she's shared is only a testament to that. Without further ado, I'll now hand it over to my fellow MC, Zenith Islam, to carry on the proceedings. Zenith, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Promi, and a warm welcome to all of you watching today. Uh, this is the beginning of our Social Business Academia Forum per se, but we have had several academic sessions in the past few days um, you know, through the form of the regional academia forums with our um, welcome notes from uh, esteemed uh, academics from all over the world. Uh, first, I kindly welcome Professor Jangir Alam Choudhury, Department of Finance Executive Director, Center for Microfinance and Development, University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. He's our academic advisor at UNICE Center and always there to help us um, for all our needs. So Professor Jangir, please. Uh, thank you, Janat, um, for your kind words. Uh, Honorable Nobel Laureate Professor Mahmoud Yunus, Ms. Lamia Moshev, Professor Kaim Anpranansar, and ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It is my pleasure to be part of this opening ceremony of the Academia segment of the Social, uh, Social Business Day celebration. This year's uh, Academia segment is different from the segment that we used to have before. Uh, we used to have like a half day, half -day program um, in the past years, uh, which used to be a pre-meeting of our Social Business Academia conference. This day we have got a two-day two program in which we are going to have like four parallel you know, plenary sessions. And on top of that, we have eight regional academia forums. So in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, research, teaching, curriculum, as well as at the country level, regional level, what we could do to promote social business teaching research and, and, and to develop curriculum. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all of us, we are suffering from COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic has exposed our existing inequalities, uh, economic as well as social in the countries, as well as uh, globally. Uh, 
Uh, we have seen that those who are the minorities, those who are disadvantaged, they are suffering the most. Uh, apart from the inequalities that we have within the society, we have seen also the inequalities uh, between uh, countries as well. Uh, we have seen that those countries which are poor are left out of the vaccination program. They are not getting enough vaccines. Whereas the developed countries are, have almost completed 60% or you know, more than 50% of vaccination, you know, uh, covering their population on the vaccination program. We have seen that the greed and profit maximization motive have an enabled the you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, to give up their patent rights. Uh, they want to maximize their profit. They don't want to. Uh, they don't want to leave. You know the opportunity to uh, in, enhance their uh, values of their shares at stock exchanges, all uh, uh, and and to maximize the profits of their owners. We have seen that. So this social as well as you know um, economic and social inequalities within the countries as well as globally uh, have shown that that the importance of social business. Uh, is increasing day by day. Uh, we have to promote this uh, concept, not only among the entrepreneurs, we have to promote this uh, in the academy as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to focus uh, the importance of social business to, from two aspects in the academia. One is you know, curriculum and teaching, another one, um, research. Uh, we have achieved some successes, in the last couple of years, as well as we have some challenges to overcome in the coming days as well. Uh, in curriculum and teaching, uh, this year in this social day of subdivision, we have made two announcements, big announcement. One is that uh, we are going to have a full place master's program, uh, which is known as uh, INUS Professional Masters on Social Business, uh, which is going to be started by uh, Asian Institute of Technology. Uh, in Thailand, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with the thing that uh, Asian Institute of Technology is one of the top uh, academic institutions in Asia as well as in the world, and is very um, you know international. So they have started this uh, you know, program, uh, and and uh, that that's a good news for us. Another good news is that uh, we will be having a MOOC on Coursera platform, which is going to be open for anybody from any parts of the world uh, to pursue that course. And, and so this is, these are the two uh, good news that we have uh, from the uh, curriculum perspective. But the main challenge that we have, okay, and on top of, you know, apart from these two courses, we have some other training as well as uh, courses that are being offered by some of the universities in Bangladesh as, as well as us. And Camp, Professor Kamsun, Kunansar University also offer uh, uh, one or two courses most probably, or, uh, some programs on social business as well, so far I know. And some in the university in Bangladesh also offer courses. So the main challenge that we have from the curriculum and teaching perspective is that uh, we don't have enough um, uh, teaching materials to provide with the students uh, when we offer the courses. So at this moment, we have to actually rely on the articles and articles that have have got published in different journals. We have to accumulate them and offer to the students. But in the long run, we have to have a textbook uh, uh, on social business uh, to offer as a uh, you know text materials to the students. So this is what we have we have to overcome in the future. And then uh, these are the you know developments that we have as well as challenges uh, from the curriculum as well as uh, teaching part. Uh, the second thing is that from research perspective that uh, we have achieved some successes, uh, you know, uh, from the research perspective, as well as we have some challenges. Uh, today in the morning, I was actually trying to look at how many journal articles have been published on social business so far in quality journals. I use a very famous platform uh, for searching journal articles, Ingen Takanek to identify how many articles there. So I use the term social business in the article, in the title of the journal article to see how many articles are there. So I saw around 63 articles are there with the term social business in the title of the uh, article. So out of, except one, all these articles started actually getting published from 2010. 
There was an article which got published in 2004. I understand that meant actually that social business, that, that article meant uh, something else or social enterprise using the term social business. So main contribution is coming from 2010. And in this process, one journal has contributed significantly, that is Journal of Social Business, of which Professor Campbell is part of, is one of the editors of the journal. So that this journal has contributed significantly. And this journal is edited by one of the distinguished professors, Professor Baker from uh, Stacklight University. He's currently a professor emeritus there. So this, this journal has significantly contributed. So when I looked at the yearly distribution of this journal articles, I found one interesting that in 2015, there were 15 articles, surprisingly. And I have to look at actually what these, those articles meant actually, did they mean social business, that the social business that we mean, or that they meant something else. And from, apart from this, that uh, from 2017, there is an increasing trend in terms of number of articles getting published in quality journals. Interestingly, in 2006, there were six published papers. And all of them are, in, are, are good quality, in good quality journals. So we have achieved these successes, and, but the main problem, uh, the main challenge that we have with respect to research is that funding, we don't have enough funding. We have to actually talk to the international organizations to come up with the funding and to incorporate social business in their priority areas. This is one. And second thing is research collaboration. We have to pursue our colleagues as well as uh, you know, social business centers in developing countries to include our colleagues from developing countries or universities from South to go for collaborative research. Uh, I can uh, very quickly mention two projects which UNICEF Center is currently running. One is Colombia, uh, another one in East Africa. So in Colombia, four research papers are going to be actually written uh, under project. And in Africa, six universities from six Islamic countries uh, will be participating in the project and they will also publish some good quality. Uh, uh, come, they will do some research, good quality research and eventually publish those paper in quality research. So these are the achievements that we have as well, but I have already mentioned we have challenges um, as well. So we have to uh, take initiatives to overcome these challenges uh, in the future. So I would like to come back again in, uh, in, in one year time to come up with, with like some, uh, to, to mention some good successes as well as some, some achievements uh, from research as teaching and curriculum um, uh, in the next year, hopefully. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to, to say some few words on research, social business teaching research and research. And thank you very much. Thank you again. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Jahangir, for sharing about our activities and our plans. Now I welcome Professor Cam Donaldson, UNOS Chair and Distinguished Professor of Health Economics, UNOS Center for Social Business and Health, Glasgow Caledonian University, Scotland, for his kind comments. Professor Cam. Thank you, Zaina, and thanks, Jahangir, for that great uh, in introductory talk. Um, my role in, in the network is, is chair of the, largely being chair of the scientific committee uh, of the Social Business Academia Conference. And I, for newer kind of members and participants, I just wanted to kind of orient people a bit as to uh, what that group is and, and where it's come from. It's really the, it's the chance uh, twice a year now alongside Social Business Day and alongside the Social Business Summit for the academic community that has been built around Professor Eunice and his ideas to uh, congregate uh, and that that really that core community has been built by uh, people like Lamia Morset and, and she'll tell you a bit a bit about the YSBC network uh, shortly but at the meetings I think what we've built is uh, a group of people who come from the, it, it's super multidisciplinary if you like it uh, we have people who come from uh, design thinking and arts backgrounds, people from humanities, business schools, social sciences, all to uh, promulgate and analyze uh, social business with the main aim of, of moving it forward. We have uh, scientists and inventors as well who bring their uh, the, those inventions to us because they want to uh, promulgate those inventions through a social business model, largely in, in, in areas of 
uh, of technology. So it really is one of the most interesting academic meetings in, in that sense that, that, uh, that, that you could attend. We've come a long way from an initial meeting alongside a social business summit or a, within a social business summit actually in Wolfsburg in 2010, where probably less than 20 uh, universities got around the table, but decided to uh, that, that, that together we could build this academic network and it really could not have gone uh, any better over the last 10 to, uh, to, to 12 years as we now enter into the, the meetings here and uh, later in the year in, in, in Africa. Um, <clears throat> one of the great invent, uh, initiatives, I think, was the idea of, of having this pre-meeting alongside uh, the Social Business Day. And I think it's just become now, it's, it's not, as Jahangir said, it's not really a pre-meeting, it's, it's become just part of our set of academic meetings uh, in its own right. But it certainly has enhanced the participation across the globe uh, of opportunities to participate uh, across the globe from many academic uh, in institutions. In our meetings now, we have up to about 50 papers being presented that are assessed by our scientific committee for, for quality. And I think as Jahangir has shown from his data, that quality has increased uh, substantially year on year uh, throughout our existence. I just wanted to say three things about moving forward. I think we are obviously facing major global challenges exposed and reinforced by the COVID uh, pandemic. And, uh, but I, I think that what we see is a, is a community, both in terms of the social business movement and its associated academic uh, teams that are well placed to address those challenges as we try to create a, a, a new philosophy of mutuality and economics uh, combined, whereby we can address multiple SDGs through the holistic approaches that are offered by uh, social business. Another challenge, of course, that uh, Pr Prami uh, mentioned in his introduction is that of the vaccine and what this community can do to aid Professor Yunus and his colleagues in the promotion of vaccines as a global common good. To do that, I think we need two things. I think we need our universities to support us. Uh, so we need to continue working internally to uh, advocate uh, that our own universities give us the support we need uh, in order to do that. But we have good models of successful UNIS social business centers that we can share uh, with, with each other as we seek to further promote educate and research around social business. And then a key kind of theme that I'm pushing, uh, particularly for this meeting and, and the next few meetings is, is that of greater collaboration. So we have lots of good examples of collaboration within regions. We now, I think, need to move to much greater collaboration across regions uh, of, of the world. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, Lamia and, and Yehangir again in terms of their support uh, for uh, helping the, the academic network around Professor Yunus to grow and indeed thrive as well as the uh, initial support we got from the Grameen Creative Lab. But I think if we can move forward on all of these, on all of these factors with terms of support, collaboration to address the challenges uh, I've, I've outlined, then there will indeed be no going back for social business. Welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Cam Donaldson. We are honored to have you for our academic, all of our academic endeavors. Um, and um, uh, there are many sessions coming up today and we look forward to having all of you in them. Uh, now we have um, our very own Ms. Lamia Morshid, um, who's our executive director of UNOS Center. Uh, Lamia, please share your kind remarks. Hello, uh, can you hear me? I seem to be having uh, some disturbance in my line, but anyway, I'll, uh, I'll just keep it brief. Um, uh, welcome to everyone to Social Business Day 2021 again. Uh, the, today is very much focused on the academic activities of, of our network, uh, which as uh, Cam mentioned, is something that has grown substantially uh, over the years, uh, over the last 10 years, and so is meriting more and more time uh, in our in our 
events and programs, Social Business Day, uh, we had a half a day, didn't have this at all, then we introduced a small half day segment. And today we have a, a full day of this because uh, it, it just seems that it's something that's needed for everyone who's part of this network. Um, so we come together in the framework of no going back and the launch also of the three zero clubs uh, initiated by Professor Yunus, both of which are related to the pandemic situation and what we need to do today, not tomorrow, to accelerate the changes we need to see in order to create a world uh, uh, that is sustainable. We, we're, we're in the path of a, an unlivable world and we can't wait to start making changes. So uh, that's why um, this three, the launch of the Three Zero Clubs has been very important. And we wanted to make sure that the young people can start today being engaged in changing the world around them. Uh, and uh, in, of course, in relation to the young people are the teaching institutions, the uh, schools and colleges and universities. And that's why the academic part uh, is very important because uh, they, they play such an important role in shaping the choices that young people make. Uh, up to recently, they didn't know that there was something called social business that they could get engaged in. Uh, they didn't, they are taught that they should become job seekers rather than job creators. So this growth of this academic uh, curriculum and uh, uh, interest from universities, actually, I always say that the YSBCs was not something we introduced. We started seeing interest from universities uh, starting 10, more than 10 years ago uh, to int start introducing this into their curriculum. Microfinance, microcredit was already there, but social business specifically. And the early institutions like GCU, which CAM represents, and AIT, uh, and HEC in, in, in Paris, uh, came to us saying we want to start a UNIS chair, or we want to start a social business program, or we want to start a center focused on this. So we saw this as a very important uh, development and wanted to play a facilitating role. So we don't impose this. This is something we facilitate. And today, uh, more and more of universities have come, come up. And we have today, uh, as of today, 92 universities in 34 countries. Can you just show the screen? You can see uh, that these are the universities around the world uh, and uh, broken up by region where there are um, so, you know, social business centers. The latest one, and we will be announcing it uh, in this session, is Tangaza University in Kenya that has introduced just this past two weeks. Um, so this is just to show you what, what it is. And UNICENTER's role is basically to facilitate exchanges between uh, supporting them with access to resources if wherever possible and connecting them through these events and our platform uh, to what extent we can. Uh, and to this end, the Social Business Day is an important event and the Social Business Academia Conference, uh, which uh, Cam and Professor Jangi both mentioned is another, another time in the year uh, it will be November 7th and 8th this year in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, and we've received more than 50 papers uh, for that. And that's a very good development too. Uh, and uh, we uh, hope that uh, by doing these events and these programs, we can help to facilitate the growth of the work and the cross-fertilization. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned by Professor Jahangir is the development of the UNIS professional masters uh, uh, that's an extremely important development, a fully accredited master's uh, course on social business. And one of the very beautiful things that's part of it is that he has, uh, they've introduced a social business practicum and colloquium, which brings them part of the time to Bangladesh to have master classes with Professor Yunus and visits to see the social businesses in the field. That has been one thing that I think that Yunus Center has been able to do in the non-pandemic time, and I hope we can go back to it, is uh, enabling uh, both academics and students to see and experience the social businesses on the ground, like the nursing college, Grameen Bank, the Nobin program, the social business industrial park, and also our joint ventures on the ground. And uh, to the extent that the pandemic limits us, we got a taste during this conference of seeing some of them via video. This was actually an idea of Professor Yunus that in our sessions, instead of just talking about program, we connected in many of our sessions to the projects on the field and listened directly for those who are implementing the social businesses, as well as those who are benefiting from it, like the Grameen Bank branch in a remote part of China uh, and, the, uh, and uh, the sports initiatives in Ivory Coast and, and Korea and so on. So maybe as long as the pandemic is on, we will see if we can try to do that uh, because the technologies that we have in our hand today enable us to do that. So that, that was what I wanted to say. Unicenter would like to just continue to provide the platform uh, to connect everyone so that you can uh, continue to grow this very important work, which we 
in the context of no going back considered to be more urgent than ever before. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lamia Apum. So we are a bit pressed for time, so we have to move ahead. Um, I'm happy to share that we have been able to, uh, we are joined by uh, Professor Beatrice Charo, who's from Tangaza University College in Kenya. As Lamia Apu said, uh, Tangaza University College has joined us as our new YSBC. This is our second YSBC in the African continent, so we're really happy to have you. We're lo we look forward to collaborating with your institution and many more other academies academic institutions in the region. So um, uh, Professor Charo, if you would like to say a few words. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on what part of the world you are joining this event from. Uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus, Nobel laureate and co-founder of the Yunus Business Fund. Ms. Lamia Moshed, Executive Director of the UNIS Center, colleagues, social business enthusiasts and academic leaders from around the world, all protocols observed. I am delighted to be able to be here today uh, to be part of this 11th Social Business Day. I want to thank very specially Madam Lamia Moshed, Executive Director of the UNIS Center for inviting me and also for the engagement that we have had so far. As Isham said, my name is Beatrice Churu and I serve as Dean of the School of Arts and Social Sciences of Tangaza University College here in Nairobi. In our school, we have had a master's degree in social entrepreneurship for the last 10 years. And with this collaborative program, we have had a lot of learning and growing in our community in the social business uh, practice among academics and students and friends. And we are now very excited to grow in impact by joining this network of the UNUS business centers. So we are very pleased to announce the start of the Tangaza University College UNUS Social Business Center. And at this, time, at this point, I want to mention some of the proposed activities of, of, the, of the center. <clears throat> First, we hope to have this uh, center continue to grow programs and improve academic programs in the social business area. We want to promote uh, social business among students and among faculty. Uh, the students, and we want to actually make this, uh, uh, for all the students, irrespective of the programs, would have some element of some learning on the area of social business offering at least some units for all the students because everyone needs to learn livelihood. Uh, to develop also programs in social business and recently we have now developed a BA degree in social business innovation. So the first thing we want to do in this center is to keep developing programs that respond to the social needs uh, in the business through the business world. And the second type of activity is to continue and improve the social business competition, which we have been doing under the auspices of the, uh, of the master's degree that I spoke about. And the social business competition seeks to identify and support innovative social businesses. And the competition is open to students and innovators who are solving social problems. To qualify and especially to win, the entrepreneurs are expected to demonstrate that they have a solid social business model. The third kind of activity is the social business workshop. The workshop seeks to promote social business in different sectors. Uh, the participants are drawn mainly from the private sector. The workshop targets business leaders, entrepreneurs, and civic society leaders who want to adopt a social business model to create positive and sustainable change in society. Uh, the fourth group of activities would be, uh, the fourth activity would be to expand and, and improve our annual African Conference on Social Entrepreneurship, which has run already uh, four cycles. Uh, we do this annually. Last year, we were unable to do it because of COVID, or we, rather we did it online, we didn't do it uh, through class, and so we are learning new ways of doing this. 
and there will be a thematic area around the social business in Africa each year. The focus of the thematic area will be generating uh, discussions on the importance of social business in addressing the challenges of poverty. Uh, the conference brings together social business innovators, academics, and funders of social business. And the fifth kind of activity is social business research. As an academic institution, obviously, we are very interested in carrying out research on social business, first of all in Kenya, but in the region. And we want to seek to collaborate with other universities in the region in doing this. And we will also build social business case studies that we can use for teaching. Uh, these are some of the activities and I'm sure we will learn so many more from this collaboration. So we are so excited to be on board with you all. And so as I close, I want to laud the conference and the business day organizers and the UNIS social business initiatives for the courageous 3-0 club initiative, the stance and the action plans. We fully identify with and back this commitment. It is fully in line with our Tangaza University values of inclusion, human dignity, integrity of creation and preferential option for the poor. Even as the pandemic ravages, we reaffirm our commitment and seek ever more innovative and sustainable ways of keeping them. We look forward to continue learning with you all how to make these commitments a sustainable reality across the world. So we enthusiastically join the call no going back and thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Beatrice Chiru. We look forward to our collaboration with Tangaza University College. And I would like to call upon my colleague, Ms. Yanis Valades, who's the coordinator at the YSBC at Universidad de Monterrey in Mexico. Um, they have been working on a um, social business challenge competition and she'll share a few words. So Yanis, in two minutes, start. Thank you very much, Ms. Zinat, and well, uh, good good morning to everyone. Uh, so, uh, Zinat called me and told me, talk about the business competition you were doing, the social business. Uh, last year, at the end of the Social Business Academia Forum we have virtually, uh, we tried to encourage all the participants to work on a project from the Latin America area. And it was, it has been a pleasure and also a really challenge to do it virtually because in the beginning we were thinking to do it physically. And when we start dreaming about this challenge, we thought that we were going to be reunited one year later because COVID was going to end. And we have this crazy idea that everything was going to, to finish during December, 2020. And we start creating our budget and seeing what was going to happen during the semester and at the end of 2020 everything was shut up and everything was closed so we said like we need to rethink about what is going to happen with our, our challenge so we make the call in january uh, in the latin america area specifically for colombia uh, bolivia and mexico we receive around 25 projects around our universities in every ages. It was a pretty good uh, call because it was the first call we do. And also um, we have any ages, like we didn't close it only for students. And it was a, it's something super happy because we were thinking that only students were going to join. And then we see the reaction of the people but also we have a sad thing because uh, other countries in other places from other parts of the world start saying that you're going to have a, a Spanish competition and they were super excited and they wanted to join. And we hope to open this year for the next generation to do it um, continuously and don't have like a specific country to do it. Um, and well, so from that 25, uh, projects that were that joined to the call we select only 14 projects and during two weeks we have our bootcamp the past two weeks we were working on a bootcamp with different topics finances administration social, social business model and we have professors from our universities giving these different um 
topics and workshops. And from that place to the semifinal, we see the advantages of the projects. We have ideas, we have validated projects, and we already have uh, also different social business that are being applied in different countries. And well, last, uh, last Tuesday, we have our final event and we select five projects that were pitching two different judges, including Ms. Lamia was over there. And well, we have a very, very good uh, audience and we are super happy of the results. We have uh, three winners at the end and we are going to apply like the microcredit. They are going to receive a fund and they, they are going to come back the money is com coming back to the university in order to repeat our challenge next year. So, well, that's our project. That's what we do during this year. And happy to get reunited with all the Lat Latin American campuses also. Thank you very much, Yanis. Uh, this competition involved uh, quite uh, all of our um, YSBCs in Latin America. So thank you for organizing this and bringing all our LATAM YSBCs together. And also thank you for waking up at five in the morning to be with us and always uh, joining our events. Uh, thank you very much to all the early risers for this event. Uh, now, finally, to, to Professor Mohamed Yunus, um, would you kindly share your thoughts on our academic initiatives? So you're on mute. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Yanis, you can go back to your bed now, get the rest of the sleep, <laughs> but we continue. Thank you, uh, my, my assignment is to welcome you all here for the academia conference uh, that we have laid out. Uh, when I talk about the uh, YSBC, you know, Social Business Center, sometimes I wonder whether we are kind of pushing them to do something they're not willing to do. Uh, so I feel reluctant to get anybody to get involved with it because they may consider that I'm being, I'm imposing them uh, on something. But uh, today uh, I'm very happy uh, with this uh, conference uh, during the social business day. There is, when we decided to do this as a uh, regional forum, country forum, uh, academia conference, academia forum. Uh, I see a lot of spontaneous response. And uh, during these two days, uh, many of them gathering themselves, organizing themselves, just having their own discussions. Uh, that makes me feel good that if I was imposing them, probably they will not be here to talk about their own thing, that they're sharing things uh, with each other. So I had, a, I had an opportunity to drop in in some of these uh, academia conferences. Uh, I was very happy to, to see the enthusiasm uh, and uh, uh, attention they're giving to the subject. So I feel happy today that uh, still uh, they want to do it. So we may not have all the uh, requirements of having a strong uh, academic center at the you know, social business center. But this is the beginning when you do something new or something uh, at the very start, uh, you don't get the best of it. You're just making a small effort and gradually want to do that. And this is all inspired by a camp, uh, Professor Cam Donaldson, uh, to have an uh, academia conference. Uh, we were not thinking at that time when we, he initiated it, uh, that there'll be enough academic people to respond to that and uh, be involved with that. Ever since it began, uh, CAM continued to provide the support, provide the leadership into it. And today, I'm, I want to thank CAM that it's come a long way. That's all I can say, it's come a long way. Quality-wise, much improved, not the best, but much improved. The number of uh, papers that you're getting uh, is not, uh, getting increased every year. So that shows that uh, there is a, space being created for social business. Uh, the mention of the space I do deliberately because this was space taken over by many other such socially oriented issues and uh, programs that the academia has been holding, particularly uh, social enterprise, uh, social entrepreneurship, 
and all those things very familiar. So when we bring the social business idea, uh, they think they are they are already doing it. So they or if they're not doing it, they say, well, uh, we can't do too many of them. So we stay with the social entrepreneurship or social enterprise what they're doing. So it's it's a, it's a difficulty when you uh, have the space taken over by other uh, near concepts uh, in the academy. So it's a slow process, but uh, I hope uh, uh, it will continue to grow like uh, Beatrice uh, from Angaza University today announced her participation from the university. Uh, we would like to see that the young uh, faculty, young researchers getting more and more interested in it, but interest will be generated only after we show its impl implication of the social business. It's a real use of the concept and how it works. The more it works, more it is identified, then more researchers will be become interested. Uh, you cannot stop researchers from something that is emerging. They see that this is the future direction. Then researchers will flock around from all directions. So we have, the real thing is on the ground. We have to show what is happening on the ground. And while Cam is doing, I'm very happy that uh, Jangir Alam Chaudhary, he provided all the support to Cam and every year, every year holding this uh, conference. Uh, we almost left to both of them, as he has said, and to applaud him too. Uh, we almost left it to both of them. They are the ones who worry about all these things. And we can't get involved with all the details, but they do very meticulously. They do it. So today, that uh, their responsibility has increased because uh, now we'll have two such conferences rather than one. <laughs> one. But that helps because one leads to the other. Uh, this is a preparatory and many other issues, more general thing. But the other one is a solid academic performances that we want to make it solid. And uh, mm. uh, we have been discussing about the journal. Uh, Jangir Alam Chaudhary always reminds us about the journal. Uh, we have not been there yet because for one reason, we have not probably produced enough material uh, to hold into a gen uh, standard uh, journal. So we, even if we can produce one such thing uh, that we'll see how to promote it, even if you don't have a journal of our own, uh, having a place in the standard journal, these are available here. So that's a, another direction that we have to move on is a conference and it's a journal thing that we go. Uh, now uh, we have another idea that is shaping up. I hope it will lead to something and it will be interesting for research uh, interest, uh, the three zero clubs. Uh, it's interesting because who are these young people want to create three zero clubs spontaneously? Not because they are teaching to do it as an assignment that you have to go to a club. Sometimes teachers with over enthusiasm do that. So no, they did it because they want to do it, not because somebody pushed them to do it. Why did they do it? What are they doing after they have done it? Uh, and after a year, have they lost interest or they're getting more, in, more excited about it? Have they connected with each other? And what are the natural connection they are making? Because three zero clubs are supposed to make networks, make circles of their own, on their own choice. So what kind of choices they are making? What, what, uh, what directions they are moving into? And what are the wrong ideas they started out with, then gradually shaped it up, that uh, those ideas abandoned, new ideas adopted. Uh, these are very important things to, to study the minds of the young people about the future of their uh, life, uh, how they will be on this planet, what kind of life they will be looking for. So this is one area I think is very interesting uh, research area if it grows into such a dimension. Uh, today, when we're listening to Amazonia, uh, uh, this came exactly the same thing that I was hoping will happen in three zero clubs. Uh, someone in Amazonia who cannot speak any other thing, any other language but their own dialects, uh, they will form their own uh, 30 club, but they will find another 30 club who can translate them into a standard language of Spanish, Portuguese, whatever they are looking for, so that uh, they can be now there's an intermediate club who, uh, who 
facilitates the people who cannot speak the language. Even if somebody cannot read and write, uh, can form a club, they find another club uh, and send uh, everything in voice, they translate it and put it in paper in, in, uh, in written statements and then share with everybody else and their responses come in these written languages then translated into uh, the verbal language uh, to the club who cannot read and write. So there is tremendous possibility of connecting young people of all uh, background. Uh, you can be at a remote place. Uh, it, can be, uh, it can be at the city center, but you are left out from the society. Now, 30 Club hopefully can connect it. So it is the future. We don't know how far this will go, but we can continue to do that. Uh, all I'm saying that I'm happy with the progress uh, camp you have uh, done with this uh, group of people. And it's a wonderful contribution that you have made over these years. And I am very happy that uh, it is still uh, moving with enthusiasm. They have not lost enthusiasm, they gained enthusiasm. That's a good indicator. And you have done it. And congratulations to come. I welcome all of you to have a successful plenary sessions on various subjects. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yunus, for your words. Um, with this, we conclude our welcome session. We have many more plenary sessions, four plenary sessions for today, and uh, we would like to commence to those. Now we will have a two-minute technical break, and then we start our plenary session. But thank you very much to all of you for sharing your, our experiences and your activities, and we look forward to having you in our upcoming sessions. Uh, 